Starting next on Tyne Tees tonight, drama in Head Over Heels. While over on Channel 4, comedy in Desmond's. <laughs> The Chippendale chicken out because he found the world was full of tables. In my role of business visionary, we do have some standards. And Arthur is definitely lower in the tone. Daily into Europe, communications division, managing director speaking. Come in, you deaf wally! With a voice like that, it beats me why we need a radio at all. You must be the legendary Arthur Daly. None other. Minder, 8.30 Thursday on ITV. In store for the later part of this Monday night on Time Tees, at 10.40, Margie Clark presents a mix of comedy, interviews and expert advice on how to get it right between the sheets in The Good Sex Guide. That's at 10.40, then at 10 past 11, we've drama in Prisoner Cell Block H. And tonight, Maxine is suspected of having a deal with Joan. Programmes still to come this Monday night here on Time Tees. The new Nissan Micra has a completely new 16-valve engine, giving it amazingly low fuel consumption. It also has a 9.4-meter turning circle, twin catalytic converters, and has been voted Car of the Year 1993. The new Nissan Micra lives in the city, loves the open road. Every day there's a chance for every one of us to see more of our land. Welcome to Intercity, the roots of Britain. Dickens make it easy to purchase a new three-piece suite. Only £99 deposit and up to three years interest-free credit at Dickens. The trouble is, is that women are totally different from men sexually. I was wondering if you might take a look at this for me. Well, of course. Uh, uh. How can Postman Pat improve your sex life? By keeping the kids occupied on Sunday mornings. The Revealing Good Sex Guide. Mondays at 10.40 on Time Tees. Looking forward to tomorrow night on Time Tees at 9, we've drama in full stretch, the drama series about a posh car hire company. And this week, Baz's marriage is threatened and Tarquin manages to lose a client's child. That's full stretch tomorrow night at 9 o'clock. But now, Monday night drama, and it's head over heels. I'm head over heels, I'm climbing the wall. Just be as a lover when the mailman calls. Head over heels, touching the sky. Like by cracker on the fall of July. of going to the academy without you. All right, then, but this is the last one. Your car is ready, Your Highness. Your mother, the Princess Jiva, is waiting. You've missed a spot, Dr. Ellis. Seven years of medical school for this. What is going on? We are just getting things ship shape for Her Royal Highness's arrival. Well, at least do wear gloves to do that, or you'll ruin your hands. Mrs. Dunn, a word, please. Royal etiquette. We've waited so many seasons to put it into practice. Think 
of the opportunities she presents for the ladies. Suni comes here not as experimental material for the other ladies, Flora. She's a pupil like any other pupil while she attends my academy. She's just a girl, after all. Oh, do be careful, you stupid woman. I've got butterflies in my stomach. You can't hide behind my skirts forever. And you can't spend your life talking to a dog. A child your age should have friends. I've still got butterflies. I'm sure they're all very nice girls. It's terribly exciting, isn't it? Let's have a dance first. Wait for me. Oh, last. Elvis next. No, 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 Marty Wilde. Frank Sinatra. Oh. How about the Waverly Brothers? I just got a record. My baby's happy. Dwayne so and Shane. I was so at school. What do you think? Oh, I like Dwayne. He's got a nice mm. voice. Heavens, come on, we'll be late. As usual, Lawrence I'm only too happy for you to take the photographs again this year for the prospectus. But I do think it's about time someone other than Stella appeared on the front. Princess Suni, perhaps? She's hardly a representative of our academy, Lawrence. The poor girl hasn't even arrived yet. And as I've said on many occasions, she is in no way to be treated differently from my other pupils. Now, May. Perhaps I could clear out one of the smaller rooms, Miss Ellis. Oh, if you're saying she really won't fit into Charm Jeanne d'Arc with the other ladies, well, we'd better see what other space we can find. Now, remember, curtsy as she passes. Speak only if she speaks to you. Excuse me. And answer politely with your royal highness if she does engage you in conversation. Mrs. Dunn, have you not listened to one word I said? Suni, oh, Flora, do get up. You look ridiculous. Welcome to the Academy, Suni. Thank you. <coughs> Come along. Mandalay. Oh, a dog. His name's Mandalay. Over here, Your Highness. Camera shy, are we? Don't worry. It's only for the local paper. My mother isn't very keen on the press. You must come and meet everyone. Then, after lunch, you can tell us all a little bit about yourself. Well, there was no one of my own age at the palace in Rangoon. I was seldom alone. My English nanny and tutor saw to that, just as they saw to my education in the English way. I hope I can do them justice. Thank you. Thank you, Suni. Any questions? I'd like to know why Suni's the only one allowed to have her own room. Your insolence gets you nowhere, you realize, Camilla? But it's not fair. People like me never get special privileges. Very well. If you feel so strongly about it, you may have your own room. And Suni will take your place in Charm Jeanne d'Arc. <laughs> I'd call it the Chambre Marie Curie. 
We could always call it the cupboard. Why does Suni have to have such a big bed in our dormitory? What are you doing with Marty Wilde? Mrs. Dunn said pop stars aren't suitable now that we have royalty with us. And Suni's asked to have all her family portraits hung up. Gosh, isn't it exciting? Changed just because of the Princess Portrait Gallery. It's not the same without you in there. Well, at least you're not sleeping on a camp bed. I think it's creepy the way Suni talks to that dog when she thinks no one's watching. Mendeley, sit. I'm afraid Mendeley's taken rather a shine to your jacket. I'm sorry. Perhaps you'd better keep it out of his way. I've got a better idea. Why don't you keep him out of my way? The prospectus is a simple document intended to lure parents into having a look round. A paragraph, Flora, was all I asked for. What can you possibly say in a paragraph? Jack managed motherhood, first aid and gardening in ten lines. Only 20 from Eileen for glamour and typing. Even Lawrence covered Bible studies and tennis with alacrity. We shouldn't be afraid to blow our own trumpet. Quality flora speaks for itself. We're a small but distinguished establishment which exists very well without crude publicity. If we had more pupils, we could take on more staff, appoint a deputy principal. As I've said on many occasions, Mrs. Dunn, I have no need of a deputy. May, is there something? It's about Princess Suni's special meals, Miss Ellis. Is it absolutely necessary? It creates such a lot of work and I... She shouldn't be having special meals. But Mrs. Dunn told me to... There will be no need to give Suni special food. Thank you, May. Does that mean she should be taking secretarial studies, too? Of course she should. A princess has no need for secretarial skills. There will be no favouritism concerning Suni. It's not favouritism, it's form. Princess Suni is a guest in our country. Yes, she's the only one who's allowed special privileges, but she's the only one who's prompted a little interest from the press, too. Some people do all the work while others take the glory. I sometimes don't know why I bother. Not a word of thanks for getting her academy all that publicity. It's from St. James's Palace. Ooh, the Ascot office. Her Majesty's Ascot representative, the Duke of Knightsbridge, regrets to inform Mrs. Flora Dunn that her application for vouchers to the royal enclosure has been unsuccessful. Mummy. Well, it's only a day at the races. Ow! I do quite a lot of photography myself, you know. Do you do your own uh, developing? I do my own developing. Really? This is Mr. Hooper, ladies, from the Socialite magazine. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. We're going to be in the Socialite. I thought you'd be pleased. What's so wonderful about that? Are you joking? One photo in the Socialite and you won't be able to move for invitations. Henley, Goodwood, Ascot. Oh, just in time. Pop upstairs and change, would you? Change, madam? This gentleman's come to take photographs for the Socialite. Oh, I won't, if you don't mind, madam. Won't what? My mother's against publicity. She was rather cross about that picture in the local paper. So I will watch. I the editor's only interested in HRH, as you know. I mean, no princess, no picture. Whatever's going on, Mrs. Dunn? 
Saturday night at the Rocket. Rock and roll, music, hamburgers. I'm having a birthday party. <laughs> Miss Ellis gave you permission? Not yet, no. I bet you anything you like, she won't say yes. Half a crown. Done. She'll never agree to it. And do you know why? Because it's you asking. Who says I'm doing the asking? It's only a party, Tontine, and it is Camilla's birthday. In the past, as you well know, James, ladies have favoured tea at the Ritz, or sometimes a picnic in the countryside, or a visit to the opera to celebrate their birthdays. But she wants to go dancing, Tontine. I know you both think I'm being very unfair, but a tradesman's cafe and loud music, they're simply not acceptable for the ladies of this establishment. <laughs> What is it? Oh. Um, nothing. <laughs> Sorry. Just a nightmare. I dreamt I was sleeping in a cupboard. I've already told James. I hardly think your father would like to know that you were having a party in a place like the Rocket. I don't think he'd like to know I was sleeping in a cupboard either, madame. Especially one infested with mice. Mice? Here? Oh, don't be ridiculous. I know what I saw, madame. And just think what the other parents would say. Suni's mother, for example. Sa Sophie. How dare you believe that you can blackmail me into getting what you want? I apologize, madame. However, it is not clear to me in what way the rocket is unsuitable for my birthday party. Because it's full of ruffians. But if it was closed to the public for the night and filled with other debutantes, well, my friends from the academy, what would be the problem? I certainly wouldn't let you out for the whole evening without a chaperone in any event. So if I find a suitable chaperone, I can have my birthday party at the rocket? So, Madame, my newly equipped establishment is not so much a coffee bar, more a highly respected trattoria. Thank you, Mr... Brown. Call me Stan, or Stanford. Thank you, Mr. Brown. I understand your pride in your establishment, but you must understand it's wholly inappropriate for you to act as chaperone. You have a vested interest. It's lovely and clean. I've just had the toilette redone. How nice. You see, I need to know that there's an outsider there, an impartial observer, preferably someone from the Academy who understands the finer points of polite social behaviour. Well, all I want is party down. Come along with me when I'm feeling wild. What about Dad? Well, why not go the whole hog and ask Tontine to do it herself? <laughs> Seriously, if we can get him to agree to come over, we can devise a way for him to be called out on duty. Someone suddenly develops appendicitis or something. Well, he'd have to go. Do you think he'll do it? It's just for one night, Dad. And it's so important to Camilla. I'm not a very good chaperone. I forget all the rules. Please? I'll clean the car for a month. I don't know. Please, Dad. Let's go to the hop. He said yes. Let's go to the hop. I don't believe it. Let's go to the hop. Oh, baby. Uh, you are brilliant. How do you manage it? Well, I think it sounds ghastly. Royal Ascot's more your sort of thing, isn't it? You got your tickets yet? <laughs> Me. I know we're not the best of friends, but it's wicked to leave me out. It's vindictive. Perhaps she doesn't like you. Thank you, Daniel, for your care and delicate choice of words. Anyway, I wouldn't want to go to her rotten rock and roll birthday party if you paid me. Of course not. That's not the point. But if she doesn't want to go, what's the point? It's the principle, Daniel. Have you no idea? 
ladies like to be asked, even if they intend to refuse. Anyway, she'll be laughing on the other side of her face when we go to Ascot. Ascot tickets wanted, top price paid, telephone Notting Hill 666. That's our number. Not a word to your father. Anyway, what you need to do in the meantime is make yourself a friend of Princess Suni. Imagine what royal engagements could follow from that. Always pluck from underneath and exercise restraint. Over-enthusiasm can cause untold embarrassment. Now, you try, ladies. Are you going to Camilla's party? I can't. Oh. It's my mother's last night in England. The Burmese ambassador's throwing a farewell party at the embassy. The embassy? They're spending an absolute fortune. I think it's a bit of a waste. My mother hates going to parties where she has to behave. You know, Suni, there are lots of ladies at the academy who'd love to be your friend. If only they knew that's what you wanted. You should invite them all to your mother's party. We'd have a super time. I couldn't. What about Camilla's too? Oh, she won't mind. She hasn't invited everyone anyway. Besides, you should give people the choice. They're all old enough to make up their own minds. If you get a headache, you just don't feel very bright. And if the pain gets worse, it can really get you down. To stop bad pain, try a painkiller with something extra. Soluble Anodin Extra, 40% more pain reliever than many ordinary tablets. New Anodin Extra Soluble turns off pain. Here in the Colombian mountains, the sun breathes flavor into some of the finest coffee beans in the world. That's why today's new Maxwell House uses more mountain-grown Colombian beans than ever before for an aroma that's inviting, a flavor that's refreshing, a new, fresher taste. Taste the freshness of the mountains. New Maxwell House. Launch this year's special stamps with a celebration of the grace and beauty of swans. Make these stamps the start of your collection. They're on sale from January the 19th onwards. You can also buy them in this charming presentation pack. Royal Mail Stamps at post offices or sent direct if you phone 0800 444 234. Look, Mickey Mouse! The castle! Oh, oh let's, let's go. go! Winter? It's a great time to go. See for yourself. Wow. Indoors and out, there's so much fun at Euro Disney this winter, you'll want to stay forever. See you tomorrow, Mickey. Call this number now or see your travel agent for winter rates. Took this job to save up for my summer holidays. AP May's my agent will save you up to £165 each. Book for just £1 deposits. Or with Travel Plus, you'll really score a year's holiday insurance and lots more. One minute, Dennis. With AP May's, you don't need a fairy godmother. You shall go on your homes. Six 16 valve engine. Side impact bars. And a new body. It's the shape to be in. The new 16 valve escorts. Scandal in full stretch this Tuesday. Page four, where it says, swinging in the rain. Full stretch, Tuesday on ITV.
His Excellency, the Burmese Ambassador, requests the pleasure of your company. At a reception to honour Her Royal Highness, Princess Jeeva of Rangoon. Gosh, I wonder who'll be there. You'll never guess, for I've just gone. An invite to Suni's mother's party. I love embassy receptions. Do you remember that do at the French embassy? When Stella drank too much. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. We'll be at my party, remember? At the rocket. Won't we? But we'll be expected to go to this. It's what our parents send us here for, after all. To meet well-bred men. They won't be very happy if they hear we've turned it down. Is that all you're interested in? Well-bred men? Of course not. I hope we didn't upset her. Listen to me and hold me tight. But they love rock and roll. What's wrong with them all? They don't know the difference between what they enjoy doing and what they think they're supposed to enjoy doing. How can they imagine an embassy full of aristocrats is going to be more fun than a night here dancing? Well, tell them. Tell them what? That they don't always have to do what's expected of them. They won't listen to me. I'm the person that knows nothing about society, remember? I don't understand you. You always think you've failed before you've even tried. Fight them. Tell them how much this means to you. It's your birthday, for goodness sake. They'll all be there on Saturday, will you? RSVP, Camilla. Buddy Holly? Going to her party? On the jukebox, nitwit. And she has got the new single by Cliff. She's got the Waverly single, too. Oh. <laughs> will the Burmese Embassy have that in their collection, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> to have a discreet word with some of the ladies. It has come to my attention that there is some confusion about Saturday night. Let me make your position absolutely clear. Suni has been kind enough to invite you all to the embassy, and I'm sure you'll agree it would be a gross discourtesy to decline such an invitation. Surely it's up to us how we spend our free time, madame. I have nothing further to say on the subject, Camilla. The Academy coach will leave here at seven sharp on Saturday. I expect you all to be on it. I haven't been spoken to like that since I was six. If Mrs. Dunn wants us to behave like young ladies, she should stop treating us like children. Here, here. That settles it then. Rocket, here we come, right? Mm -hmm. Who's going to tell Suni? Who's going to tell Suni what? Now what am I supposed to do? My mother's made special arrangements. I just can't cancel everything. We've got to find a way to make your party more exciting than Camilla's. Not much chance of that. They only seem interested in rock and roll. And men. Well, there won't be any shortage of those at the embassy. What sort of men exactly? Socialites Bachelors of the Month. Viscount Valentine, Lord Collingwood, the Earl of Dorchester. They're all going to your party. They are friends of my mother. Dorchester's rather attractive. And highly eligible. I like the look of the Marquis of Knightsbridge. Knightsbridge? Will his father be there? Yes. <laughs> Five. Ten. Fifteen. Twenty. If you don't mind me saying, you don't look like a betting lady. One doesn't go to Ascot for the horses, but for the people. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. I've got some wonderful news. So have I. How much did they cost? Oh, I sold one or two premium ones, but I hardly think money is the issue here. Well, I think money's the issue as far as that man's concerned. These are for last year's Ascot. <laughs> for medicinal purposes. What I came to say is, guess who's going to Suni's party? 
Father Christmas. The Marquis of Knightsbridge and his father, the Duke. I hope he has a jolly nice time. Oh, but you're not thinking straight. The Duke of Knightsbridge. The Queen's Ascot representative. All you have to do is go to the Embassy, be charming to the Duke, and hey presto, we're off to the races. But I haven't been asked to the Embassy. The only member of staff without an invitation, I shouldn't wonder. Well, I know one person who won't be using her invitation to Suni's party. Take your time. Splendid. Eyes straight ahead. And hug the step behind with the heel of your shoe, sliding it down gently. No need to hurry. Just think beautiful thoughts and the rest will come naturally. Some of us learned to walk when we were two. Less conversation, more concentration, thank you. I'm sorry to interrupt, Miss Ellis. May I borrow Camilla for a moment? If she can tear herself away. Very nice. I was wondering, did you receive an invitation to Suni's party? I threw it away. Why? I just didn't like to think of you being left out. It can be so hurtful when one fails to receive an invitation. Nice doggy. Doggy. Go ahead with your party or what? Oh. Well, I don't think the others have made up their minds what they're doing yet. I think some of them will come. Did I ever tell you I was at school with them? Oh, only about a million times. <laughs> <laughs> Just how well do you know them? She's my happy birthday, baby. She's my rocking birthday girl. She's my celebrating lady. Got a lot to tell the world. In the pickup, like the candles on the cake. Gotta do some fancy footwork. I can't believe it. Real pop idols are actually coming here. How on earth did you persuade them? Jimbo, they said, for you, anything. <laughs> and I won't leave her. Editor was very disappointed last time. If I don't get a picture of HRH, I could lose my job. I wrote to her mother myself requesting permission. Her Royal Highness is getting ready now. What's the matter with him? I've no idea. I don't think we want Mandalay in the photograph, delightful though he is. There's something the matter with him. I've got to take him to the vet straight away. But what about the socialite? I'm sorry. I'd like to speak to someone in authority. No, no, absolutely no need, really. My husband's an amateur photographer. He has some photographs we could offer you instead. Sixteen candles. Chilling. 
What's this? Give Dr. Ellis ten minutes of chaperoning here, then put a bit on the end of your tongue. You come up in an amazing rash all over. He has to come and tend to you. Hey, presto, no chaperone. We get to do whatever we want. I... I don't mind luring him away, but... It says this is not to be taken internally. It's dangerous. But it's an old trick. I used to do it all the time to get off exams. I hope you are satisfied. What do you mean? I've just come from the vet. He says Mandalay's been poisoned. He might die. Poisoned? I hope you're happy now, that's all. What? <laughs> what are you looking at? You didn't, did you? Poison Mandalay. <laughs> I wish I had. Revolting dog. I wouldn't touch this if I were you, Bernadette. Actually, and Mum... here's your special bowl. Ah. Cornflakes. Since when? I know, but... Kellogg's cornflakes. Delicious flakes of corn drenched in ice-cold milk. Why don't we ever get any of... Kellogg's cornflakes. Have you forgotten how good they taste? This really is the end, Atkins. I spend months creating a flexible new way for everyone to afford a new Vauxhall. I come up with a catchy name for the scheme. Choices, one, two, three. All I ask of you is an event to launch it. Something to get people rushing to their Vauxhall dealers for more info. And what do you come up with? A motor show in Venice! A city with no roads! Yes, you said you wanted a bit of a splash, JD. So I did. Oops. <laughs> An SOS at HQ revealed a VIP with an OBE tucking into a baked potato without HP. Everything's okay with HP. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. I feel good. I knew that I wouldn't. So good! So good! I got it. Enrich your natural hair colour with glints from Clairol. It shampoos in easily and rinses out after a few washes, leaving your hair looking good and feeling good. So good! So good! I got it. neutral cleansing ingredients and one quarter moisturizing cream. Quite by chance, I seem to have acquired a document relating to a new soft drink launched by the Coca-Cola company. Apparently, it's uh, sugar-free and clear in colour. The name is given as Tab Clear, and uh, the words ultimate soft drink are used. I'm telling you this because I think the public have a right to know. Naturally, I'm open to offers on the document. Is it surprising that Denmark has the highest divorce rate in Europe? Due to our minimum standards of picture quality, we deeply regret we are unable to use your blurred snapshot and return it herewith. Well, really? Life is fraught with disappointments, Lawrence. Now, don't let me keep you. I'd like to show them the front of our new prospectus, then see if they think my pictures look like snapshots. Our new prospectus? 
Yes, I think you'll be pleased. I haven't even approved the layout yet. Ah, uh, Flora was keen we should rush them through so she'd have some copies to take tonight to distribute to the party guests at the embassy. Are you sure it's all right for you to go on somebody else's invitation, Mummy? You can't just go approaching men on your own, Stella. I've got to be there to make proper introductions. This could be a very big night for you. Take a look at that and tell me I have no talent. Oh, Lawrence, you are clever. We had an agreement. I was relying on you to stay at least so I don't get lumbered with Dr. Ellis as a chaperone. How can I turn down an invitation like this for a night in bed with some chillbling powder? You're not being reasonable. Well, it's up to you. If you want to spend the evening with a bunch of snobs... You don't know they're snobs. And even if they are, they're... they're snobs with titles and estates in Berkshire. Why don't you just admit you're a social climber like the rest of them? And why don't you admit that you have a chip on your shoulder the size of Piccadilly Circus? Really let Camilla down, if I. She could have come too. Or at least discussed changing the night of her party. If she'd been more reasonable, I might well have considered staying. But she's her own worst enemy. I mean, how can she expect sympathy if she goes around poisoning people's pets? I hadn't realised everyone was going to come, though. Do you think some of us should go back? Very best behaviour tonight, ladies. Remember, you are representing the Academy. Sure, Princess Suni will approve. Are we having a party or what? Come on. Dad's waiting to chaperone us. Oh, no. He sent you this. He made it from his garden. How am I supposed to pin that to a leather jacket? Happy birthday, Camilla. Bonsoir, mademoiselle. Happy birthday. Where are the others? So many men. Hardly any women at all. Souvenirs. That's him, the Duke of Knightsbridge. I remember. Speak only you've spoken to, and answer with your Royal Highness. Good. Hello, Mother. This is Miss Ellis, the principal of the Academy. Good evening, Your Highness. I've been so looking forward to meeting you. What a lot of pretty friends you found, Suni. Oh, Your Royal Highness, I would just like to say on behalf of us all, what a monumental honor. Show them where to go, would you? We've put you in the young people's room. How exciting! <laughs> Oh, 
Please do not hesitate to ask if you need anything. Not exactly wall-to-wall -wall men in here, is it? Lemonade, anyone? Very good. None of your business. Come with me to the Casbah. I beg your pardon? I, uh, want to make a change from do you come here often. <laughs> Rufus Ballantyne, how do you do? Viscount Ballantyne. Guilty as charged. Come and have a powwow with the chaps. Chaps? Mad as hatters. You'll love them. Do excuse me, Your Grace. Flora Dunn. I hope you don't mind my introducing myself. I was wondering, Your Grace, if you might see your way clear to a couple of spare vouchers for Ascot. Well, I imagine you keep one or two back for special cases. Oh, for special cases, yes. I'd be quite happy to make it worth your while. That is to say, perhaps a donation to your favorite charity. Well, now I've heard it all. Feel like a good laugh? This lady's just offered to cross my palm with silver if I smuggle her into Ascot. <laughs> <laughs> Don't mind, Father. He's a bit sticky about things like that. Unlike me. You're the Duke's son. Oh, call me Percy. I happen to have a couple of Ascot vouchers. I also happen to have a favorite charity. Me. Uh, perhaps we can come to some arrangement. Anything wrong? No, just double-checking something. Um, shall we say... Ten pounds? Oh, I'd rather we said twenty. The thing is, Stella, old girl, are you a good sport? Like a good joke, do you? Oh, rather, in fact. Oh, look, there's Percy. Come and meet Percy. <clears throat> Mad as a hatter. You'll love him. <laughs> Laugh, oh, Stella. You said you liked a joke. Sweetheart. I've just had a stroke of luck. Beastly people. Beastly party. I wish we'd never come. And that's good so many years. So much for your bosom pals, the Waverley brothers. Who have you got for us next week? Bill Haley, Chuck Berry. They said they'd be here. I'm sorry. It's not just tonight that's upsetting you, is it? What's eating you? They think I tried to kill Suni's dog. Why? He's been poisoned. They think I did it with my chillblain powder. Oh, Jesus. Mouse poison. Oh, Jimmy, you idiot! How could you be so stupid? Me? It was you who saw the mouse. Thanks. Oh, come on. <gasps> Is that them? What's going on, Jimbo? Thought you said there was a party. You're much better looking in your poster. Where are all the girls you promised? Yeah, we thought they'd be here waiting for us. Change of plan. Can you give us a lift? Yeah. Get in. I just got to talk to Dad. Oh. I spy with my little eye. Oh, do put a sock in it. I think it's outrageous keeping us cooped up in some sort of social Siberia. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. Oh, does your mother always treat you like this? Like a child, yes. She doesn't want me to grow up. She doesn't want competition. That's why she's leaving me here in England while she goes home. She's got a cheek coming here. Heavens, it's Dwayne. And Shane! Real pop idols. I thought she was joking. Who's died in here? Some party, this. You're much better looking in your poster. 
Mouse poison. That's what did it. Mouse poison? Yeah, I put it down and Mandalay must have eaten some. But it's okay. That's it, it's okay, and he's gone to tell the vet. You mean Camilla had nothing to do with it? Of course I didn't. I don't know what to say. Sorry would be a start. Of course I'm sorry. Me too. And me. Come on, Camilla. You can see how it looked. What were we supposed to think? Hey, chicks, over here. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four. My baby's happy. Come on, it's Camilla's birthday. Let's have some fun. I'm so excited. I'll tell you why. Today's her birthday. Miss Ellis, I must ask you to keep your children under control. They're not children, Your Highness. They're young ladies. They're usually extremely well behaved. She's my happy birthday, baby. She's my happy birthday, girl. Who are these people, Sunni? The Waverleys. They perform popular music. Is this how you encourage your young ladies to behave? Not as a rule, Your Highness. I'm sure there's some straightforward explanation. Camilla de la Mer, no doubt. Behavior that would clearly call into question her future at the Academy. If that's the case, then you had better consider my future too, madam. Sunni! Please allow me to speak for myself, mother. I am not a child. What happened here tonight is nobody's fault but mine. I invited them to entertain my friends. You wanted me to make friends, remember? While well, I'm trying. Oh, Your Royal Highness, I can't imagine what evil thoughts have been put in her head. Time for us to be leaving, I think, Mrs. Dunn. We should at least have handed a few of these around. Could have made something out of the whole charade. We do not tout our wares like commoners, Flora. Not common at all this year, actually. Thanks to Lawrence. We had one of Suni, but she wouldn't let us use it. I think Mandalay does the trick, though, don't you? There'll be no more Mandalay, Flora. I've sent him back to the embassy. And there'll be no more photo sessions, journalists, special meals, privileges, or flouting of the rules on behalf of Suni. She stays as one of my many pupils on an equal footing with all the others. Her decision, as well as mine. Now, Flora, please don't let me keep you. in the chambre jardin. Unless you like being on your own, of course. No one really likes being on their own, do they? <laughs> Come on. Any chance you can teach my friend to jive? Or is your dance card full? Mm -hmm. Nothing too flashy, though. You may be a princess, but I'm the cool rock and roll around here.
coming next week on Head Over Heels. It's Curly Tempest. You're a natural, little one. You've got a crush on Curly, then? Of course not. Honestly, Daddy, I'll be perfectly all right on my own. I'd marry him, I would. So would my mum. Hey, it's my door! Will Bernadette and Catherine get into more trouble than they can handle? Tune in to next week's episode of Head Over Heels. I'm head over heels, I'm climbing the wall. Jumpy as a lover when the mailman calls. Head over heels, touching the sky. Like a firecracker on the 4th of July. I'm head over heels. Touching the sky like a firecracker on the fourth of July. I'm head over heels, high as a kite. You make Monday morning feel like Saturday night. The theme tune from Head Over Heels, sung by Nick Haverson, is out now as a single at all good record shops. John Gilbert, Sheila Gish, and Robert Hardy in the final Inspector Morse. You'd be nothing and no one if it weren't for me, Mary Probert. You're supposed to be investigating the murder of Neville Grimshaw. There may well be a connection. Two shootings in one day. How often does that happen in Oxford? But why? And why here? Well, that's what we've got to find out, sir. Would you say Madame Probert has any real enemies, Mr. Mallison? If you know anything about it, you must tell me. Inspector Morse, Wednesday at 8 on ITV. This Wednesday, Tony Benn reflects on the events that shaped his thinking as a child, growing up in Westminster. At 10, shape up with Sophia. I don't like you being taken advantage of by some guy from out of town. At least when Blanche does it, it's good for tourism. <laughs> and at 10.30, an inspector calls. Stick together. Wednesday, on four. <laughs> Surprisingly, all this won't provide you with the fibre you need each day. In fact, you'd have to eat twice as much. Or you could simply add a bowl of Kellogg's All Bran. Kellogg's All Bran, a great fibre provider. Of course, working here, we're the first to notice the change in people's behaviour. We're making more of these things than ever before. Young people can't afford to take chances these days. It seems they've got their heads screwed on, though. After all, I've never been so busy. Fancy some beef. If I could take that grill out, I could do a cracking steak on it. Oh yeah, a big juicy sirloin, all marinated and garlicky. Look at it just sizzling away there. That's enough that side. Cool, that beef looks well tender. It's gonna melt in the mouth, that is. A few herbs. <laughs> just doing me time. Oh. British beef. Even the thought of it tastes good. Coming up at 10.40 tonight on Time Tees, Margie Clark continues the quest for better sex and tonight asks what really turns a man on with contributions from guest stars Tony Robinson and Bernard Hill. The Good Sex Guide tonight at 10.40 here on Time Tees. Do you get mocked by friends and family because you hold strong opinions? Are you happy to say what you really think about politics and social issues, even when those around you disagree? Can you justify your ideas when challenged? Head to Head is a new program for the new year. We're looking for Northeasterners with strong views who aren't ashamed to air them. To 
we ought to be talking to you, then drop us a line with some of your views on current issues. Write to Head to Head, PO Box 1HH, Newcastle NE99 1HH. We will reply to all letters.